Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Sarcastic Barman, and welcome to my channel. We're finally doing them. I've I've put this off for fucking ever. It's one I've always wanted to cover, but like, oh, should I? We're going to do some spirit science. We're going to look at the rise of Atlantis, because why the hell not? Oh, I hope you've all got plenty of beer, plenty of spirits, because you're going to fucking need them. Trust me. But let's get on. Let's check out the video, and let's see how crazy he's going to be. Over the last few thousand years, we have warped our own history. Our stories of the past have been changed, altered, mistranslated, and completely been misunderstood as we rounded the curve on the procession of the equinox. Modern views of our history account for many things, but completely dismiss many very important pieces in the puzzle. For example, the pyramids of Giza. There is no modern theory that accounts for how these could have been made. No modern theories, that's quite right, apart from the theory of lots and lots of well-trained labourers paid with beer and bread. Yay, beer, because beer solves everything. And you always think of the best ideas when you've had enough beer. Well, every good story starts with beer. No good story starts with a salad. Individually, each block cannot be pulled even with 50 men pulling it, let alone drag it for hundreds of miles and then stack them on top of each other 450 feet in the air. No, this one comes down to beer once again, because you find that big blocks are much easier to pull on wet sand, but not too wet because then they sink in. So basically they gave all the builders lots and lots of beer and then when they needed to pee, they just peed in front of the blocks. That's not historically accurate, but there's principles basically there. And then as for stacking them up, they're not going to lift them like that, are they? They're going to drag them up ramps to get up and not this big ramp that comes all the way along. You're going to go round the building. And you know what? They found in areas of the pyramids where they're cracked, you can see these ramps that were inside the building. Thanks to an architect who went to the pyramids just to view them on holiday, said, hmm, that looks quite odd. And he came up with his theory on he, how he would design and build the pyramids. Hey, do you know what? They found that that theory actually holds water, unlike the sand and the beer. In such a precise way that even modern technology can't achieve. Not to mention having it lined up precisely with both Orion's belt, a golden mean, and Fibonacci spiral, and be a primary nodal point of every sacred site on the planet. You cheeky dick waffle! Of course we could do just as good or even fucking better with modern technology. The fuck is wrong with you? And it only aligned up with fucking Orion's belt, what, 12,000 years ago? Doesn't align now, not precisely, not how you would say it does. And as for the Fibonacci spiral and stuff like that, it's fucking ratios and numbers. The Egyptians could fucking count. What's your fucking point? And it's only exact to what, three decimal places? So yes, they could count. And if you've got people whose entire job in life is to count, you'll be quite surprised how well they can fucking count. The field of archaeology recently saw some monumental discoveries that are rocking the foundation of what we think we know about ourselves. Many ancient cities such as Babylon, Erech, and Akkad that were written about in the Bible and other ancient texts were always thought to be myths because no one could prove they existed. You are either lying or you're stupid! Now, Babylon as a city has been known about for a fucking long time. It was written about even in the medieval times and it was a good place to get bricks from apparently. Who knew? And the Muslims also conquered it. And we've had archaeologists out there since the 1800s. So, no. I'm not even bothering to check the other two, mainly because I don't know how to spell them, so if someone could spell them in chat so I can actually Google them, because putting in a cod city or an erect city doesn't work. Doesn't work. I could go and dig out a Bible and go and search, but nah. It's just going to be rubbish again, isn't it? Then, one of them was found. This led to finding another, and then another. Inside one of these cities, archaeologists found thousands of cylindrical clay tablets hidden deep within the earth under this ancient city. How am I supposed to check which clay tablets you're on about if you don't tell us which city they were found under? For fuck's sake, you make this so much more difficult than it needs to be. And yes, cities get found. I'm glad you at least put that down. You should have stuck with Troy or something like that because that was a much better find because that is a proper ancient city that no one thought existed and was all part of the parable of the fucking Iliad and all that jazz. But no, whatever. The tablets were completely covered in text, written in cuneiform, and tell an ancient story that spans back over hundreds of thousands of years on this planet, describing the history of the Earth and the origins of the human race in great detail. Does it? Does it really? Are you sure you're not making this shit up as you go along? I think you're probably making this shit up as you go along. Or some weird ancient Egyptian deity is beaming the thoughts to them. <laughs> 
Now, the first thing we all want to do is just say that they were making things up. They didn't know the history of Earth, and they were simply creating tales to explain where they came from. However, if this was true, how can we explain how they knew so many things about the universe that would seem impossible to know? Now, it depends what they knew. If it was something that wasn't divisible by observation and lots and lots of maths, then that'd be cool. So if they could tell us the chemical composition of rocks on the moon or something like that, that'd be cool. Or something you wouldn't expect them to know, like the atomic structure of uranium. Something randomly cool that would be like, ooh, this changes everything. If it's just stars move and we have information that stars move, that's just observation over time and maths and working shit out. Not only did the Dogons know all about the distant planets in the solar system, but so did the Sumerians. They described them all in great detail in these Sumerian records. They also knew about the procession of the equinox. That's a tough one for a historian to understand, because it takes over 2,000 years of continuous observation to actually learn that the Earth has a wobble. Well, I'm calling bollocks on the Sumerians knowing great details about the fucking planets in our solar system, and the Dogons just know. And as for the processional wobble, how is that a difficult one for history to understand? The Sumerian civilization lasted for over 2,000 years, so there's nothing wrong with that. And also, we know one of the oldest cities in the world has been occupied for over 11,000 years. So what's to stop someone making an observation and then generations down the line, someone else making an observation and generations again? Now, the procession was first noticed by the Greeks, as far as we know, and that was before Jesus was born. So I have no problem with a Sumerian tablet saying, yes, there was a wobble. But otherwise, just no for the finding of the planets. There's nothing I can find online that makes it sound like, yes, they definitely knew about these planets. Just no. The Sumerians had this information from day one of their civilization. A man named Zachariah Sitchin spent a long time transcribing these texts and had put them all together in his books. But many others have also done the same, and the interpretations are always very similar. Really? From day one of the civilization? Fine. Show me a six and a half thousand year old tablet that's got this information on. Not a five thousand year old tablet that's given them time to build on it. A six and a half thousand year old tablet. And then show me information that they hadn't picked up any information off. People who lived before them and built on that information and expanded on it more and used their understanding of that information to expand more as they made more observations. You know how science and fucking shit works. You build on the people before you. Yeah, that'd be good. And as for Shichins, no, no one fucking agrees with him. He thinks there were ancient aliens in Anunnaki. The people who agree with him are nut jobs like you. Yay, nut jobs. Not only that, but Thoth has also shared information about this with us, and his account matches the Sumerian records. Oh wow, Thoth? Whoa, didn't know you were getting him involved. Is that the real Thoth, or is that just some guy going, I'm reading information and I'm passing it on to you? That'll be the fucking second one then, won't it? Yes, because how can an ancient fucking god that doesn't exist communicate anything apart from being made up by some guy who's obviously smoked far too much bad acacia bark? Adamus and other channelings discuss it as well. If you see all of these records and sources, there is a huge connection between the stories. Wow, a modern person connecting two stories by going... Blah, 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 blah. I wonder why. And I wonder why people are buying the books, because they're saying exactly what you want them to say. Wouldn't that be a strange thing? He knows that people are interested in all this crap and going, Why well, yes, I can channel this guy, look. I don't know if he really goes, but I really hope he does. We are, however, going to be picking up the story at the end of Lemuria and discussing the events of Atlantis up to present day. What I'm going to tell you is a mix of what these records say, along with what Thoth has told us for some finer details. Well, I think we're going to ignore anything that Thoth channels and tells you, because that's just bollocks, let's be fair. And we'll take anything that's got credible scientific evidence behind it. So, this is going to be interesting. We're going to look at fucking Atlantis. Woo! Please have your own experience while watching this. I'm not going to tell you that this is fact. I am simply saying, decide for yourself. That's going to be the biggest cop-out right there, isn't it? I'm not going to tell you it's fact. No, because you fucking can't, because it's not, is it? If it was fact, you'd say, it's fact. Thoth told us. And yes, everything that Thoth tells us has got to be true, because it's Thoth. I wonder how many I can get in this video before it gets really fucking annoying. There was a time, long ago, when humans existed at a very high level of consciousness. We were interdimensional and were very psychic. I've come up with a really cool idea. Watch this. 
There was a time, long ago, when humans had lots of fucking drugs. Look at this, and we had psychic powers. We communicated through thought and emotion, much like how animals do rather than speaking or writing, which would seem very primitive. We didn't know any words or how to write, so we just grunted and looked at each other with our eyes. Ooh. We lived primarily on a large string of islands called Lemuria, but there was a consciousness shift. We moved up in consciousness, and the islands of Lumeria sank beneath the oceans. We lived on some islands, but as time went on, the waters began to rise as the ice age melted, and the islands went boop. At the time of this shift, a new continent rose out of the waters. We called it Atlantis. But obviously, as these islands disappeared, another one arrived that we can't prove exists, but well, whatever. Back in the early 1900s, the spiritual path of the United States was similar to what's happening today. People began to learn about meditation and study ancient lands like Atlantis and Lemuria. Back in the early 1900s, America was really weird and religious took over. People had to meditate because there was no fucking booze. We actually found quite a bit of evidence that Lemuria existed, and it had to do with coral. See, the ocean floor does rise and fall. Coral can exist up to 150 feet under the surface of the water. In 1910, the surface of the ocean was probably higher because they were able to see coral rings heading away from Easter Islands for a great distance. These rings were estimated to be found at 1,800 feet, which means that for them to have existed, they would have had to be much higher and sunk slowly. Probably more important, they also found the exact same fauna and flora from the Hawaiian Islands all the way to the Easter Islands. Now you're not getting away with this shit. I love my full new voices, but no. Now, sea levels rise and fall. We do understand this. It's not a problem. Ice ages and all that shit. Then you've got the fact you're saying this coral, which coral will actually survive 800 feet below sea level. Won't do as well, but it will survive and grow. So that's a bit different if you're 150, really, isn't it? And as for the fauna and fauna and all that jazz, you'll be surprised with a really, really big storm how far seeds and things will fucking travel. It's surprising how far cars and fucking houses will travel in fucking tornadoes, so something as light as a seed is going to do quite fucking well, really, isn't it? And then let's not forget that people have been going about on boats in that area for a fucking long time. And what's to say they didn't take seeds and shit with them? Well, maybe not seeds, but maybe they ate some fucking fruit and then had a shit. Because seeds do really well with that. That's what they're fucking designed for if they're in a fucking fruit. This is a great distance, but if you look at a map, you'll see a long string. That string, according to Thoth, used to run along the western shores of Lemuria. Well, it's Thoth information, so... There is that. But, yeah, and... It's a string of islands. If you look at a fucking Google Map version of the French Polynesians, you can see there's lots of bits that are just below sea level and lots of little islands. So a bit lower sea level, yeah, you're going to get even more islands, which makes it even easier for all these seeds to travel, all these people to travel and everything else. So drift seeds and drift plants are a fucking thing. Drifting on the sea currents and through wind. And if there's even more islands, that makes life even easier for them. After the sinking of Lemuria and the rising of Atlantis, at first the human race became scattered. We moved to various islands and continents all over the world because we didn't have a home. Yet, we didn't know where to go. At that time, there were about 1,000 humans at a very high consciousness, more than all of the rest. They were called the Nikals. Today, we know them as Ascended Masters. Ooh, the Nikals. Next, you'll tell me you're using the Nikal tablets. You know, those things that have been called out to be fake. And everything about the Nikals being fake. But no, we wouldn't have that, because Thoth will tell us. The Nikals began preparing Atlantis to be our new home. They projected their energies across the surface of the continent in the form of the Tree of Life, not with 10 circles, but with 12, an extra on top on the island of Udal, and an extra on the bottom in the water. Let's just cut to the chase. Have you got any evidence that's real about Atlantis? That'll be no then, won't it? Because you can't count Thoth. You can't count the Nicoles because they're made up. So I'm calling bollocks. Let's skip forward and see if you've got anything of actual interest or scientificness to thingy apart from, ooh, crystals, ooh, imaginary made up beings, ooh, stuff. Though the Lemurians had only filled eight of the vortex areas, Mayan records state clearly that there were 10 cities in Atlantis when it fell. You can see these records in the Troano document, which is now located in the British Museum. How about no, you crazy Dutch bastard? No, 
No, they fucking don't. This all goes back to the Abbe de Brousseur or something like that, who completely and utterly cocked up the translation of the Mayan fucking documents by thinking that each letter, rep sorry, each character and glyph represented a letter, and you can make an alphabet out of it. Apart from it didn't, and he got it completely wrong. And he was just basing what he was doing over the story of Mu and the lost continents and influences from Greek and fucking archaeology and all that shit. Basically, he just made up a load of shit and made the words fit so it fucking looked like it did. Based on modern translation things, it, it's nowhere near what it said, and he just made all this shit up. Well done, him. To fill these two empty vortexes, according to Thoth, two extraterrestrial races stepped in. Has told us about the aliens that came to fill the holes. I think it's going to be something weird. Not one, but two completely different races. The first race were the Hebrews, coming from our future. Thoth says that they came from off-planet, but we don't know where exactly. Time-travelling space Jews. Thanks, Thoth. It also puts perspective on the story of Exodus. Perhaps Moses incarnated into that lifetime to free the Hebrews because they were not direct descendants of humans and were being treated unfairly. Nope. Nope. Not touching that bit. Nope. Jews and Hebrews are definitely humans. D <laughs> D fuck, dude. The other race that stepped in caused big problems. These beings came from the nearby planet of Mars. See, according to Thoth, Mars looked very much like Earth, a little less than a million years ago. Both. So I think he got that wrong, because maybe a billion years ago it had a bit of ice left on it that you could probably see. But you're looking more like two and a half to three and a half billion years ago for Mars being greenish. Same with Venus. Apparently Venus used to be quite nice. But Thoth should know all this. Because Thoth is... It was beautiful. It had oceans and water and trees that were just fantastic. But something happened to them, and it has to do with something called the Lucifer Experiment. What? Well, Lucifer? The, this guy? The fuck is he doing on Mars? And why is he doing experiments? And if it didn't involve fucking sex, drugs, and rock and roll, then it's obviously not his experiment. If it's anything to do with genocide and murder and stuff like that, then it should be this guy's experiment. You're gonna have to pick one here, dude. From the very beginning of creation, everything is simply an experiment. Creation itself was just consciousness creating and inhabiting itself in that creation. There is no divine plan. Spirit can do whatever it wants. Having said that, if spirit decides to cut itself off from the rest of consciousness and create a separate reality on its own, it can do that too. This is called the Lucifer Experiment. What? Creation happened because consciousness started thinking. How did the consciousness start thinking if there was nothing in creation? That's like circular logic. The creation happened because something thought, and something thought because it was created. Yeah, okay. You crazy Dutch bastard. You are nuts. You are absolutely nuts. Oh, I, I don't think I can take much more of this tonight. It's it's getting on and my brain is slowly pouring out of my ears. Need more booze desperately to put up with this shit. Oh, fuck my life. For all the people who have told me to do spirit science in the past and we joked about doing spirit science on some chats and things like that, it's just like, oh, good God, why? If you want me to see more spirit science... Just, just let me know. I'll stock up on the rum and we'll do it. I'll do a drinking video on spirit science. Every time he says Thoth or something else that's stupidly wrong or just made up shit. And we'll just see how pissed we can get on the stream. Because why the fuck not? I Actually, yes, we'll do it as a live stream. That'll be a bit of a laugh. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm absolutely going to bed. I am fucked. But don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe down below. If you've got any videos you want me to check out, don't forget to leave them in comments. Become an order of the bar stewards, because why the hell not? Thank you to my Patreons, Doran B. Uh, my newest patron, the Key Was... Key... Oh, crap. Yeah, my Patreons, Durham B, Stinger News 1, and my newest patron, the Keweasel. Keyweasel. Keyweasel. That'll do. I, I, I can't ever talk. You know what I'm like. Um, apart from that, we'll see you on Wednesday for the next video, and I think we're doing an Order of Bar Stewards video. I haven't decided yet, but we'll find out by Wednesday. Yay! Good night. 
fuck you, you're a fucking wanker We're gonna punch you right in the balls Fuck you with a fucking anchor You're all cunt, so fuck you